very warm welcome to you. My name is Catherine Mwangi. Welcome to Books and Blogs today from City Lodge Hotel at Two Rivers Mall. We are going to be delving into a book club conversation with the League of Young Professionals Readers and Leaders Book Club. We are going to be discussing the house that Jack Ma built. Walk with me, let's engage. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police, they said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> you 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know if you reject, I just want to say that. sorry now. Welcome to our first book club conversation this year, 2019. We are privileged to have members of the NYP, safer to say that way, the Readers and Leaders Book Club. And I will introduce them, or maybe it will be easier for them to introduce themselves, just your name. Okay. My name is Tabitha Moya. Okay. Yeah, I'm a member of NYP there. Okay. My name is Nelly Lucy. Okay. Oko Erastus. Mr. Chairman, yes. why are you leaving that out? We <laughs> agree with the chairman. Yes, yes, and we'll come back to you, tell us more about LYP, yes. My name is Masi Kimili. Okay. You, you also have a title. Yes, the director of the book club. Director of the book club. Okay. I'm Justin Dabuki. I'm the vice chair of the League of Young Professionals, and I think also one of the founders of the League of Young Professionals of Kenya. Thank you. Francis Chegin, um, also one of the founders of the group. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you married to Josephine. <laughs> it's not a secret. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, my name is Daisy Nyaga, a member of the NYP. Yes, club. it's good to see you again, Daisy. Pleasure to. Uh, my name is uh, Washington Mwangi, a member of the NYP board. Okay, cool. Karibuni sana. So, Chairman, tell us about a little bit, just before you get into the book, about NYP. Mm -hmm. So LYP is a network with the aim to create an inspired community of game changers. In fact, it's not just LYP Kenya because now we have LYP Uganda. Mm -hmm. LYP has a couple of pillars. We believe strongly that, that reading makes great leaders. So the Readers and Leaders Club is here representing LYP. Mm -hmm. However, we have other pillars. We have LYP Social. So that the, the idea behind LYP Social is to create a safe space for people to <coughs> network and really know each other, okay. build deeper networks. Right. Then we have LYP Investment to pull resources together and invest together. Okay. We also have uh, LYP Foundation or LYP CSR where we actually focus on education. And uh, Tabitha is a director in LYP Foundation okay. where we uh, actually reach out to schools and we build that they, they are people, we mentor them, and we build what we call winning habits. Okay. Yes. Wow. How, how many members does LYP have? LYP has excess of 10,000 members mm. online, but in terms of the ones who have uh, registered, we have excess of, of, actually I would say nearly 500 because counting LYP Uganda, counting LYP in other uh, <coughs> counties, mm -hmm. but the major melting pot is actually Nairobi. Mm -hmm where we have uh, quite a lot of members and we have several activities like the book club meets on a monthly basis mm -hmm. we have different other meetings and things that we do together okay. in fact okay. uh, LOP is going to be celebrating 10 years this year yeah. 10 years wow. 10 years of change 10 years of uh, you know great things yeah. 10 years of impact and inspiration we have so many stories of lives that have been transformed, businesses that have been built, yeah. you know, situations that have been changed. LOP is changing the world. Good. Yes. Well, congratulations. And thank you for representing the book club. I know it's, it's bigger than just the eight of us here. Mm. Uh, but So thank you for coming. So the house, Alibaba, the house that Jack Ma built. So that's the book we reviewed this morning. Um, so I'll start from the end, working my way to the beginning. When you finished reading this book, and I think I'll direct the question to Daisy. Mm -hmm. When you finished reading this book, so you, you were done with the last word, last sentence, mm -hmm. what, what did you feel? 
for me, when I finished reading the book, yeah. the first thing that came to my mind is, wow, what a resilient gentleman was Jack Ma. Because if you look at the whole story, how he began, especially on the bit that he had to learn English to be able to build Alibaba, to connect the Chinese to the world and the world to the China. So for me, I just thought this guy must have been very resilient and he went beyond the odds because he had so many odds stacked against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, that was one thing that really hit me. Yeah. And I, it's something I think a lot of us can learn from, both at individual level, yeah. both at uh, the business level, professionally. There's so much you can learn about resilience. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That. What about you, Josephine? Um, <clears throat> so the book, the, the house that Jack Ma built is a, is a story of a, a pursuit, as you know, is a, is a journey. It's a journey of an individual who's committed to succeeding despite all odds. And this person is, I mean, he, he's starting from nothing and everything he knew is, is different. But he takes advantage of the opportunities around himself. Because as you see, Jack Ma built the company when China was getting into the growth phase. And so he realizes, uh, I'm sitting at an opportunity and I can leverage on, on, on technology to grow something quite huge. And he, he uses his lifelong experiences. And it's actually a path from interacting with these tourists, learning English, traveling all the way to the US to actually experience the, the startup industry and walking back with a computer in his, in his luggage and just starting small and growing. It's also a story of vision and it really speaks to how big do you dream? Because if your, your dreams are small, you can only go so far. So even as he was starting small, he had a global vision and he knew that he wants something that would transform uh, the world and also position China in the world map. Yeah. And so for me, that was the story and actually asking myself, how big are my dreams? How big is my ambition? And how, how am I looking at myself as an individual with the little resources I have and actually thinking that I can do, I can do, I can transform the world. Okay. Yeah. Tabitha, what are some of the character traits of Jack Ma were attractive to you? The fact that this is such a motivating uh, read and seeing that uh, his resilience was, you know, well displayed. Mm -hmm. The fact that he didn't have any godfather, anyone he was looking up to. He actually started from an inward energy. He believed in himself. He didn't have the kind of resources that uh, even some of us have right now. But uh, he went through the phases. He, didn't, he, he never got stopped never got stopped out of failures that he had, he still went past them. That was very encouraging for me. Mm -hmm. And even to see that um, it's not a unique personality he had. It's not someone that I would read and think he already had stars around him. He was just an ordinary fan up. So Chairman, she's talked about having a godfather and relatability. Yeah. Um, so what stops us in our society? as you know it here now. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting look at it, at things. And when I look at this book, first of all, who is Jack Ma right now? His net worth north of 37.4 billion. You know, <laughs> coming from a family where he did not have, a, nobody was an entrepreneur. I think that's why he's talking about it. That it doesn't have a good father, it doesn't follow. So it's also a story of hope. You can actually make it. And he could not speak English, and now his merchandise is, 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 is global. And uh, when you're talking about relatability, having the Godfather and things like that, what we can quickly glean is that it's possible once you have the vision uh, and you also bring a solution to a problem in people's life, making life easier, he identified that niche and he was able to run with it and look where he is right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but when you look at our stories in Africa, or even just Kenya, forget Africa, mm -hmm. just let's stop with what we know. Mm -hmm. Um, why why do we not have such stories? Because we see ourselves in Jack Ma, yeah. you know, that humble background, resilient, you both talked about resilient, uh, but Francis, 
why why do we not have those stories and then given that he started this in his 30s why is it that his story is my story our story but we do not have our own local jackmans i wouldn't really say that um, we don't have the jackmans okay give me give me two of them <laughs> just two from here <laughs> I think the difference is that at the scale at which he has succeeded, we, we still have people in Kenya who have really succeeded, but you know, at a at a smaller at a smaller level. Scale, okay. But for Jack Ma, you know, it's it's really uh, about the sky. But I'll say um, when I read about about Jack Ma, mm -hmm. um, I read that he he failed twice to to get into. A teacher's training at uh, uh, college, mm -hmm. and he failed so many times. Uh, he even applied to go to Harvard. I think 18 times he got rejected. Uh, he applied to go to work at KFC. I think he, uh, uh, 20 times. He still didn't succeed. Um, so um, I found that he is a really, really a person who never gives up. Never gives up, and I think that. That's one of the character traits. Character traits I think that we don't have. Um, that of keeping at it despite mm. all the challenges, all the failures that we face. But remember, Mercy, Jack Ma had just him, his wife Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, his wife Kathy. Mm. And some nondescript two guys there who, you know, they like lived in this yeah, yeah, who lived in this apartment and they were all looking up to this crazy guy mm. okay yes. so yes i hear resilience and i agree with everyone who you know i think we all agree the resilient factor but francis has brought in the whole we need to have a mindset of not giving up but is, is that the only thing i would talk about the power of networks mm -hmm. one thing that stands out for me about jackma is that when he was nine years old when he used to cycle for kilometers to just go and learn English and train tourists about English and take them through their, 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 his country. Mm -hmm. One thing he learned is that he kept talking to one of the children that he, he was talking to. And because of that friendship, he got an opportunity to go to the US. Mm -hmm. So he got to, his world was opened mm -hmm. through that. So it's very important to have social networks. Jack Ma uh, actually worked with people who are smarter than himself. Mm -hmm. And even the, the writer of the book uh, is someone who met him when he was starting his startup. So um, this actually helped him with strategy and what he needed to do to make his enterprise successful. Many times you find entrepreneurs would not want to consult because they think uh, professional services are expensive and therefore they lack in running a professional organization from a very small scale. Mm. And therefore, by just leveraging on smart people, people who understand how to build this, this platform, how to grow the technology and how to just make things work. And remember he had this passion and he has a vision and he has to rally people around himself to make it happen. But he needs people who just know how to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. And I think for him he was smart enough to, to recognize that I need to work with professionals to help me grow this vision. And I think that propelled him even further and faster. Washington, at what point do you think Jack Ma got his breakthrough? I think uh, once he developed that trait for handling rejection, I think uh, if he uh, rejected 10 times, it takes something extra which keep on going. I think uh, for many of us, like uh, the previous question, what stops us, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, not knowing how to get up after uh, after being rejected. Because if you go for an interview and you have four with one left, you go for the next one, mm -hmm. four with the one left, mm -hmm. you apply to have a ten times a rejected. I think for many people, that should be the end of it. You might start thinking, maybe that's not where I'm meant to go. But I think just having that, realizing how to handle rejection and uh, raising from that and moving on, I think that's why you is. Nelly, the place of his wife in his life. I, I, first, I like that it was, okay, the author did not really so much like focus on Kathy. Mm -hmm. I have to call her by her name. <laughs> yeah, didn't focus so much on Kathy, but the few times he did, we actually saw a woman who helped her husband build this empire. And, and so, do you think it is something that is a 
common thing again in our society. I want I want us to be relatable to our society too. Are our men fortunate or lucky to have partners like Kathy who will scrounge with them in a dirty apartment, host strangers in her home just to build? When you get such a woman, you're very lucky. And when you're such a woman, you must be really, really um, self-assured in terms of looking at this guy who is a risk taker. And for a woman to be with you throughout, to decide, okay, this guy, I think he's onto something, you must be lucky. And I will tell you, as LYP, we already have, they've not been to that small apartment, but <laughs> the founders, <laughs> the founders, <laughs> the founders, <laughs> the founders. <laughs> Josephine is supporting Francis. Francis, what are you? Then you say you're Jack Francis, so for me, and in fact, when you asked about Jack Ma, we don't have a Jack Ma. I mean, this is our tenth year. We are talking about Jack Ma after how many years? Mm, Thirty-six to fifty. Yes. That's what oh, fourteen, yeah. more or less. We are, yeah, we are about to even hit twenty. Yeah, and you're talking about ten. And if you look at a lot of book club, you're talking about <coughs> four. We have our Jack Ma here. Jack Ma! Local version! So, jo Josephine, what dreams are you feeling for France? Share with us. Share. No, I think I'll, I'll catch up uh, with the Cathy discussion. And, um, I mean, the entrepreneurship journey can be lonely and quite um, full of uncertainty. I can tell you, uh, my husband is an entrepreneur, and it, it's, it's sometimes you just sit back and, and and you wonder, because it's it's not the normal uh, predictable career path of you're working, then you grow. Mm -hmm. It's a journey of startup and uncertainties, and it takes time. So if there's no that patience and support and encouragement, then uh, it it becomes difficult. So I celebrate the position of women mm -hmm. in, in that in that space and really standing by and supporting. Um, these uh, businesses so they are equal stakeholders and shareholders yeah. in the growth of those businesses yeah daisy what about the book for you could have been better or what more did you want to read in the book uh before i answer that mm -hmm. i think i'd like to take you back to another question okay you asked about uh why don't you have our jack ma stories okay um my view is we have our Jack Ma stories, or rather our success stories, mm -hmm. but we are probably not telling them more. We are probably not showcasing the <coughs> success stories. Why? I think it's something that needs to be discussed. I think the reason maybe our stories are not that obvious is either we, we are too conservative or private, one of the two, so we don't want to share because, you know... Kiara will come for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 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 That's the truth. <laughs> yes. How many people are yeah. willing to take that risk? I mean, it means you have to take a risk. You're leaving something that you've been comfortable with. Yeah. So I think most of us, maybe we are not willing to take that risk. There has to be something. That's why we hustle. Mm -hmm. As you're doing something, yeah. you're also hustling. Yeah. So that you can. <laughs> Uh, if it succeeds, then I'll be out. Yeah. There's a question you asked uh, Washington about at what point he became successful. And I reflected on a story of a Chinese bamboo. Mm -hmm. A Chinese bamboo, it takes several years, nearly 25, and then it grows within a very short time to be very long. So it looks like an overnight success. Uh. But what somebody does not know, 25 years, things were happening mm. underneath. Mm. I believe for this story for Jack Ma, where the success started mm -hmm. was when for nine years he was something was growing in him when he had to cycle yeah. all his way for nine years to meet these uh, Americans and to, to, to do whatever grew yeah. from that time is what really propelled him. I was just talking to a friend of mine from Japan and they were saying when you're very young you're told Look at this product. Is this French? This Jack is Ma? Japanese. Is it Jack Ma? <laughs> they, they might be Jack, Jack Ma's relative. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this, look at this, for example, look at this um, carrot. Right. This is grown in Japan. It doesn't have chemicals. It is pure. Whatever comes from Japan is pure, good, overboard quality. Mm -hmm. And this is done for children who are even less than, you know, three years. Mm -hmm. 
what happens is they grow up knowing quality, knowing integrity, knowing, you know, I think that is what we need mm. even for our society. I wanted to add about um, how Jack Ma actually um, funded his business initially. Okay. Um, he invited 18 of his friends. He talked to them about the vision that he had. And out of that, he was able to raise 60,000 US uh, dollars, which mm -hmm. is equivalent to maybe 16 six six million, six yeah. million Kenya shillings. And I think that brought to me about how uh, we ought to embrace that, that fact of talking to your friends, um, ensuring that they buy into the vision that you have and you, you know, yeah. you know, get started. Yeah, but I like something Chairman said, which brings me to now I get it. You've said it, I get it. It's cultural perspectives. Mm -hmm. So if in Japan it is pure, you know it's pure, there's integrity, it's ethics, you're not hiding from KRA. So kids grow up a certain way. Mm -hmm. And I think that environment makes it very easier to succeed mm -hmm. than here. So even by the time Jack Ma's story is coming out, here, we'll, we'll first hold back because someone will either come after you, mm. you know, <laughs> and want a portion of your business, or, I mean, if you get to that level mm. of success, I think. I think one of the reasons why he also succeeded very well is the market, because uh, if you look at the Chinese population, it's, I think, over 1.6 billion. For Kenya, we are about 40 million. Mm. So if you start a company in Kenya, uh, and you are primarily um, your customers are within the border, so you are looking at 14 million people. Mm. He was looking at uh, 1.6 billion. So I, I, I feel that that aspect of uh, the, the fact that there was more people he needed to serve. Yeah, there's a bigger market. I'm not yeah. sure I would totally but agree with that. that mm. And this is because in China <coughs> there is a whole street of fake, uh, mm. fake <laughs> goods. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I think he would actually have more struggles if you think about it in that line. I think we have a better we have a better market. Yeah. If you think about it, because he, yeah. he struggled he struggled through going through fakes because there are so many fakes. But you also have to look at the fact that you know for him um, his business is technology business. He's right? going he to go there. Yes. Early adult, and and because also Chinese are very uh, they have that manufacturing uh, culture, so yeah. he was able to uh, to expose. The Chinese goods to yeah. the whole world. Yeah. So I think that aspect of him being um, uh, an early adopter of internet, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, getting ahead of everyone else, yeah. uh, I really help him. It can I help propel? Tabitha, mm -hmm. the idea, because I think that's where we are sort of floating, like, mm -hmm. so the idea that he had, uh, he, he was able to to see something. What actually what what triggered his passion in this online business? Was it did you see a computer and mm. you got intrigued or something? Yes. Yes. And they also yeah. Chinese yeah. Schools. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. So <coughs> he saw this idea, he had no clue about technology. In fact, throughout the book it said that he wore his ignorance of technology as a proud badge. Like he was yeah. proud about me, I don't know nothing technology, mm. which I thought. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the place of having an idea? Because irrespective of whether China has how many billions of people compared to us, the idea that you have, I, just me thinking, is what propels you to such you know, levels of success. Mm -hmm. um, well, it's one thing to have an idea, yeah. and another thing to actually execute it. Yeah. And uh, what he did, he surrounded himself, he himself with uh, the network that will support that idea. Many people die with their ideas because they don't want to share, they don't want to, to lose it. They, you know, it. it will be stolen. Yes, <laughs> yes. 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 that's true. Yeah. Especially that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but then also we have not um, looked at some structures of how to support our ideas, even at the conceptual <coughs> level where we, you can patent it and now you do not have any fear of yes. it being stolen. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Um, so there are some structures in our society today, especially mm. in Kenya, mm. that we've not put in place and even not done enough research, not uh, even taught ourselves or exposed ourselves to that level mm. of knowing that I can protect my idea at this level. And so I will not even have any 
fear, our fear of, of yes. letting it you know, blossom and grow. Um, and once we do that, yeah. we can actually get the right support to execute it yeah. because you will not be able to execute it by yourself. Mm. You will need the doers, you will need the dreamers mm. on board to be able to accelerate that growth. Yeah. And that's the support that Jack Ma had. Yeah. Yeah. You know somebody say that the, the grave is the richest place. Yeah. yeah. Because so many die with with ideas, yeah. with uh, you know, things that could change the world. For me, another thing that I'm thinking about right now is from here then what and that's the reason we also do the book club in LYP, the local context. Now we've learned mm. about Jack Ma, he was here, big thing. What do we do about it? Yeah. And there's a great, there's a ter tremendous opportunity. Yeah. Right now we are talking about Vision 2030. Mm -hmm. We have the big four agenda. How do you position yourself with yeah. your business idea? Yeah. How do you position yourself? What can you do? Right now we are also at a place where we are discussing change of curriculum mm -hmm. in as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, do we, are we able to have a voice in terms of something that will shape the future mm -hmm. for, for our children? I yes. hear you. We'll pick on that. Hold that thought as well. <laughs> we'll pick on that just shortly after this break. Don't go too far.